All right, thanks for staying with us now. Um, political attempts to correct the skewed balance inherent on uh, one region dominating the political space since independence has proved abortive. Those favored by the imbalance will continue to sabotage any efforts that hope um, to mend this one-sided leadership. Some have said that the interest or the nearest attempt of a southerner becoming elected president after independence was in 1992 presidential election. It was won by Moshuda Biola of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and judged, uh, of course, to be the fair, freest and fairest elections, right? Now, the best elections ever held in the history, some would also argue. Now, we believe if there's ever to be any hope for a more balanced leadership structure in Nigeria, there should first um, be a deliberate attempt to understand why. Now, so we're asking why is the North so relevant? right, in the Nigerian political space? And why do we continue to see them dominate the scene? Now, that's the question. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. I'm going to bring in Sanusi in a minute, but I want to hear your thoughts. you even have an idea why? <laughs> okay, so I think it's because um, the, the North has a very unique common culture, let me, let me put it that way, right? So even, this is not even religion now, because even the Christians and the Muslims seem to be able to, you know, live together and still have that sort of unity. And I think their language also binds them as well. So, I mean, it's very possible for you to see um, someone who is not even, maybe someone who's from Chad, for example, a Fulani man, and he lives in the north, and he, he can survive in the north till the peak of his career, and even, you know, retire there, and not have any issues. So I think it's their unity. They have that very strong bond that just keeps and puts them together, mm. and that's what has kept, kept them going. Interesting. Yeah. I just want to also add that, for me, I think what I've observed about the northern um, people, they are a lot more politically aware. They are politically literate. They might be illiterate in terms of book and reading and whatever, but when it comes to political literacy, they have the highest number of politically literate people in the North. But let me bring in our guest now. So Nitsu Bature is a communication and public relations expert with 18 years working experience in media, international development, private sector, and politics. A graduate of mass communication from the University of Maduguri, Sanusi holds MSc in social work and specialization on community development from Laduke Akintola University of Technology, Obomosho. Now a master's in public relations from Bayero University, Kano, and an MSc project management from the Robert Kennedy College, Zurich in Switzerland. And he's joined us via phone, <laughs> live from Kano State, I believe. We had a a bit of challenge with his network so that's why we we even delayed but thank you so much for joining us and thank you how are you i'm very well thank you so uh i mean you heard our conversation and a little bit of banter when i talked about uh what's it called the presidential spokesperson for the apc saying that you know the um the um, the apc flag bearer ashwajo admit has a lot of northern backing right every single time there is an election there's always a buzz about the north it me, I mean, it tells us that there's a very, very strong relevance that the North has. And we're trying to understand it. Because for me, I believe that if there's anything I have learned in this life, when you begin to unravel and understand why certain things happen, then you're able to also then have a better understanding. And if you really want to switch or change a structure, it must come first from that level of understanding. So maybe you should help us explain this relevance, right? When we say everything about presidential or any kind of election, especially presidency, the North has to be, you must get the Northern buying. Why is that so? Are you there? Yes. Go ahead. All right, I think you're getting more. Hello? Yeah, we're with you. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, in understanding the relevance of Northern Nigeria in the United States, there are some certain factors that we need to understand. The North has uh, political investment over the years simply because of a number of factors. Factor number one is the Northern Power Block, which legally consists of the retired military general and business movement who have been within the power cycle for many years and try to dominate or, or, or predict or control to some extent 
what can happen within the country. Uh, the second thing is the population of the map. Uh, population is very, very, is very high. The place is like kind of where I, I came from. Uh, you have the uh, largest uh, number of boats uh, across the 19 northern states in Canada. Uh, over 6 million of the 20 22 pounds. And this boat is actually the political might of the north. But we need to understand the differences between the various categories of stakeholders in terms of politics uh, itself in the north. The voters are there and they are controlled by different categories of the stakeholders. And the key stakeholders at the south usually have this connect with the real voters at the grassroots level. I am particularly talking about the power block, the traditional power block, and then the religious power block. If you look at the geography of the areas where are predominantly Muslim uh, populated areas, and then the places where are Christian predominantly populated areas. But sometimes the North decides to speak with one voice without the sentiment of religion, pride, or geographical differences. But in some cases, the North can go in different ways, based on these different categories of the, of, 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 the, of the population. Looking at the 2023 20, scenario, it's actually not going to be about the North but the South. Because some of these factors of northern domination in the political space might not play for some simple reasons. One, we have two major contenders from the four north. One is from the northeast, which is Atuko Abubakar, who has been a very uh, uh, frequent and popular candidate. And then we have Ravi Musa Pongkoto, who is from the northwest, which is the highly populated geopolitical zone in the north. And this is the first time it's contested. So if you uh, uh, the clash will be uh, between two formidable northern candidates, plus, plus a southern candidate that has a very strong alliance with the north. Why I say because APC is rooted in, in the north prior to 2019. You understand? So you cannot downplay that influence even in 2023 uh, permutation. But on the other side, the clash will generally be between four major candidates. And those four major candidates, some of them have some alliances within the other regions, particularly of southern uh, extraction. And some from the south, like you has some alliances with the north itself. So the calculation would be in a uh, somehow complex this time around because if you look at those factors, the Northern Power Block is trying to to redirect or to divide into two because this time around there are some people who are not really happy with the APC and they might not really work for the APC. And there are some of them who are also going to really hold their arms and decided not to really partake into the 2023, uh, uh, 2023 uh, political activity. But if you look at this, since the population, do you follow me? Go ahead, please. Still, still the, po the population, after the power block, you have, you have some key influencers that literally consist around the technocrats, the retired civil servants, the, the elitist community of the North, and then you have the business community of the North, and then you have the religious community. Okay, so we'll go on a very short break now. <laughs> when we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. And if you just tune in, we're discussing the topic, the relevance of the North in Nigerian politics. And we have with us Sanusi Baturi, 
um, he's joined us to have the conversation. Now remember, you can also join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Way Show. Um, before we just uh, bring in Sanusi again, uh, Manny, you're here. How was your day? <laughs> How was your weekend? How are you? My weekend. I'm still very. I'm. I'm <laughs> badly shaking right now. My weekend was very stressful, and um, today has just been very hectic. Hmm. On my way here, I got hit by someone. So, oh wow. Yeah. Oh wow. We've been doing the basketballs on the road. This <laughs> well. As well, yeah. so um, um, but to if you can hear us, um, Chinelo has a question for you, okay? Go ahead, okay? So, I was going to ask about you, you said something about population, the northern mm -hmm. population, how this has, or rather, how this has attributed to um, the northern's dominance when it comes to Nigerian politics, right? Yes, okay, so could you please explain further? Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, the population is uh, very, very high. And uh, lo looking at the registered voters of the 2023 potential voters, for example, Kano has over 6 million naira. And you know, one thing that really trying to is trying to change the narrative for 2023 is actually the economic hardship that affected so much the downtrodden, the less privileged, who constitute like 80% of the total number of voters that may actually go out to cast their vote. And uh, still on the population, it's a political strength because the North if the North decided to go in one direction, the population would be helpful, uh, definitely because of the number of votes that can actually make. But on the other side, we can ask ourselves, can the North have a block vote for 2023 in one direction? Naturally, the answer is no, because of the two major contenders from the north, and then one major contender from the south with a strong alliance in the north. So, with this, the 2023 scenario might not really be the traditional scenario of northern elections, or that pro can protect the northern interest as they go. Uh, let me take the scenario of uh, the presence of Tinubu into the rest. Tinubu has a very strong alliance with some selected northern governors. Uh, there are many in number, like I had you mentioning in one of the news items that you read during the beginning of this program. But unfortunately, only two of them are aspiring for the second tenure in 2023. But the remaining are finishing their second tenures, and they might be of lesser relevance compared to the 2019 election. That is one. And secondly, Buhari has been from the north, and unfortunately, the north still felt that Buhari has not done nothing much for the northern region. And it's like voting somebody from you and ending up in a double, in, in a double uh, jeopardy, politically, economically, and security-wise. So that block board that Buhari has been enjoying from 2003 of between 7 million to 11 million before he won the election finally in 2015, might be divided into the three major candidates. Particularly, uh, Rajiv Kokoso of NNPP will take the major part of Buhari's block vote uh, for a simple reason of being probably uh, seen as a very 
probably a very good okay. ambassador hmm. of so the North. I want to come Who to you on this some... subject of, if you can hear me, I want to come to you on this subject of population. Because as I had okay. mentioned earlier at the beginning of the conversation, why are we not able to actually have right figures, right? Our censors, we've not done censors in a very long time, right? Most of these things we say, oh, the population is there, the population is there. If the population is there, why is it so difficult for the, any serious government to say, you know what, let me know the numbers and let us calculate who truly is a Nigerian and how many people are in a certain region. Because again, this has been the narrative all along that there is a block, there is a block, uh, what's it called, number. There is a huge number of electorates. I agree with you 100% and I had mentioned it earlier. I know that Northerners for sure are the most literate when it comes to um, voting, right? Most of the people at, 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 um, that attain legal age go to get their PVCs without being asked to, right? They have that uh, political literacy. They have that um, consciousness that, oh, they want to be part of the electoral process, right? That is on one hand. But the hand of the census itself, the numbers, it's, I mean, for me, I just feel that like some of these numbers are exaggerated. They are, you know, it's, it's, it's not really, yes, we might, we might have land mass in the north, but do we have those people that really are eligible voters, right, that are in the north? That is the, that is the subject of conversation because a lot of state governments, um, uh, federal government, everybody avoids the subject of, of, of census. I don't know why, because it's a, also a tool for political leaders to use. And they tell you, oh, they have 50 million some, somewhere, somewhere, which is not 100% correct. Well, um, there, there are some things that you need to look at, apart from having the voters only. The political benefits that is attached to the population does not stop at the voters level only, but I have to remind you that even the space of other political positions outnumbers from the north outnumbers many in other parts of the country. For example, the population of Kano put it in a position where it will have it, it has all the time forty members of State House of Assembly, twenty four House of Representatives. And these twenty four House of Representatives were determined before 1999 elections based on the population of the state. And I believe you must have been aware that some states will be having maybe five, eight House of Representatives members. So these numbers are really helping in terms of the general political dominance. Why? Because you have 360 something members of House of Representatives. So if you calculate the ratio coming from Kano, Sokoto, Adamawa, and other places, you will have more numbers. And those numbers are the people that actually go to the grassroots level and mobilize both and manage elections, manage campaigns during, during, during the election also. So, for example, if you come to Lagos, the political domination probably might be left in the hands of the core politicians, other people might be really trying to just do their business and just wait for the day of election. But in the North, the situation is not the same. If you have the core politicians of like 10% of the total population of the some conservative states like Kano, you will have like other 60% of the population who are not directly full-fledged partisan politicians, but they partake in one way or the other into the political process because of the political awareness and probably the relationship between various political office holders, both appointed and elected positions. Mm. So that creates massive awareness. And in places like Kano, as, I, as I'm talking to you now, if you go to any place, be it market, hospital, the major dominant discussion is about nothing but politics. Yeah. Because this is the political field. But in some places, it might not be the same. Hmm. You understand? You can go to some places in Lagos, and if you talk politics, people will just see you as like, 
Yeah, not so yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I hundred percent agree with you because that consciousness uh -huh. is always there in the north. But so, see, as we wrap up the conversation, right? I mean, you've given a lot of breaking down as to how the northern vote will be split in these elections based on the uh, what's it called, the three main um, uh, what's it called, northerners okay. that are involved in the uh, political race, right? Um, so, but mm -hmm. would you say that if you as a candidate does not have, you do not have a northern buy-in at some worth. Is, is it safe to say that that candidate is probably running and going nowhere? Well, uh, that's absolutely true because from my little analysis over the like three, four, five previous elections, is um, either a southern candidate with a so much buy-in from the north or a northern candidate that is most preferred by the northern block vote. So if we wake up tomorrow and see a northern president succeeding Buhari, whether we like it or not, we have to give the credit to a certain extent to the north. And if we also wake up the next election with a southern president succeeding Buhari, whether we like it or not, we have to give the credit to a very significant extent to the North. Why I'm saying this? Because the political players of the country, as I said earlier, are divided into three, four, five. Let me mention about the three. There's a um, Northern Power Block group who operate behind the scenes. Not everybody know them. Not everybody see them. And they don't participate in the active politics in a free manner. And then you have the notable northern politicians who are spread across the three major candidates. But the, the success of each group will determine of who control what number of the votes in what state. A particular reference I will give you, the Northeast, which is the second to the largest region, that is the Northwest, has the presidential candidate of the PDP at Yuku, and then vice presidential candidate of Tinubu. Even there, you have to split both. And in the Northwest, which has the highest, it has Kwankoso, uh, which has been one of the most admired candidates in that region, and is popular as well. And Kwankoso has all the tendencies to inherit the block vote that has been enjoyed by Buhari during the previous elections I, in, 20, okay. in 2003, <laughs> 2007, and 2011. Mm. Okay, let so me let's take some comments. Well, let's take some comments because some people tend to, they're, they're disagreeing with you. Go ahead. Manny. Hello? Yeah, we're taking some comments. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Chinelo, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? The relevance of North in Nigerian politics in a nutshell, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. They feel that they are the only ones who have an idea of leadership and, occupy, and to occupy an office. They also feel that it is, if it's not them, it's nobody. Sister Owa made a very important statement and point. She said that the Northerners may be literate in leadership, but not in the educational system, which is right. And I agree wholeheart wholeheartedly. You ladies look beautiful and lovely. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways regular fan. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. Go ahead, man. I disagree with your guest that the North has the population, but I agree with him that the dominance is perpetrated by the elite and retired generals. Call it the Northern Oligarchy. oligarchy. It is this oligarchy that dictates the political direction because of their unity, which others lack. Take the Ohanese, for instance, where they, they're ready to produce a president. No same with the Afine Ferry. Why is it that the North is kicking against restructuring? Because it won't fight, favor them. It was the same oligarchy that... Oligarchy, that's called the Biola's <laughs> that's election. That's called the Biola's election. How many local governments do we have in the North? So we have like a minute to go, <laughs> but let me just quickly take. Nobody, nobody can inherit Buhari's votes. This is from another 
audience because I, I i totally don't want to believe that there's one singular person that can monster that momentum that buhari had okay. president buhari had in 2015 it's not I, I don't see any of the candidates wielding that power mm -hmm. but hey thank you so much sonisi for your time with us um money in one word if you had because you didn't say anything <laughs> at all um do you still believe that we have to keep depending on the north for, to produce a president like every presidential aspirant that is running for office, do they need to really get the buy-in of the North? Well, they, I think, like he said, they might need to get the buy-in because they have the population. They mm -hmm. have the you know, larger population of registered voters. And not just registered voters, but voters that have collected their PVCs. Mm -hmm. What we have in the South is we have not many people who are registered and people who are registered and don't have their PVCs. So if they have the numbers, and they have the um, religious sentiments or religious sentiments, then I think we need them. Absolutely. Yeah. On that note, we take a, uh, we'll go, uh, we'll leave the show rather. Now, before we go, thank you so much, Nello. Thank you, Manny. Thank you, Sunusi, as well. Um, do ensure you follow us on all social media platforms at We Show Africa. On Twitter, you can add a one there. Now, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. The greatest power is not money power, but political power. This is very, very powerful. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.